The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Chapter 5 After these things was a festival day of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem a pond called Probatica, which in Hebrew is called Bethsaida, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick, of blind, of lame, of withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And an angel of the Lord descended at certain times into the pond, and the water was moved. And he went down, and he who went down first into the pond after the motion of the water was made whole of whatsoever infirmity he lay under. And there was a certain man there that had been eight and thirty years under his infirmity. Him, when Jesus had seen lying and knew that he had been now a long time, he said to him, Wilt thou be made whole? The infirm man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pond. For whilst I am coming, another goeth down before me. Jesus said to him, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and he took up his bed and walked, and it was the Sabbath that day. The Jews therefore said to him that was healed, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for thee to take up thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, he said to me, Take up thy bed and walk. They asked them therefore, Who is that man who said to thee, Take up thy bed and walk? But he who was heal healed knew not who it was, for Jesus went aside from the multitude standing in the place. Afterwards Jesus findeth him in the temple, and saith to him, Behold, Thou art made whole, sin no more, lest something worse happen to thee. The man went his way and told the Jews, and it was Je that it was Jesus who had made him whole. Therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus, because he did these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh until now, and I work. Hereupon, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he did not only break the Sabbath, but also said God was his father, making himself equal to God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, Amen, I say unto you, the Son cannot do anything of himself, but what he seeth the Father doing. For what things soever he doth, these the Son also doth in like manner. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things which himself doth. And greater works than these will he show him, that you may wonder. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and giveth life, so the Son also giveth life to whom he will. For neither does the Father judge any man, but hath given all judgment to the Son, that all men may honor the Son as they honor the Father. He who honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father who hath sent him. Amen, amen, I say unto you, that he who heareth my word and believeth him that sent me hath life everlasting and cometh not into judgment but is passed from death to life. Amen, amen, I say unto you that the hour cometh, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so he hath given the Son also to have life in himself. And he hath given him power to do judgment, because he is the Son of God. Wonder not at this, for the hour cometh, wherein all that are in the graves shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that have done good things shall come forth unto the resurrection of life, but they that have done evil unto the resurrection of judgment. 
I cannot of myself do anything. As I hear, so I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. You sent to John, and he gave testimony to the truth. But I receive not testimony from men. But I say these things that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater testimony than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to perfect, the works themselves which I do, give testimony of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself who hath sent me hath given testimony of me. Neither have you heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And you have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him you believe not. Search the scriptures, for you think in them to have life everlasting, and the same are they that give testimony of me. And you will not come to me that you may have life. I receive glory not from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in the name of my Father, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive glory one from another, and the glory which is from God alone you do not seek? Think not that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuseth you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you did believe Moses, you would perhaps believe me also, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Well, this is John chapter 5, and it gets very theological. He meets the man who is infirm. He can't get up to go into the pond. It's interesting in the, I think it's in the old um, traditional Latin mass uh, readings for the angel Raphael, who lost his feast day after Vatican II. It's very sad. Before Vatican II, St. Michael had his feast day uh, in September. Uh, St. Gabriel had his feast day in March, and Raphael had his feast day. And I believe this is the gospel for Raphael because it was believed that Raphael, Rapha, healing, El, God, the healing angel of God, was the angel who stirred up this pool in Jerusalem for healing. So this is a New Testament appearance of St. Gabriel, even though the name Gabriel isn't there. Now, the man couldn't get down into the water to receive this. And you'll notice that we had... Uh, water in, in chapter 2, we had the water turning into wine. We had water with the baptism and being born again of water and the Holy Ghost in chapter 3. In chapter 4, we had the water at the well with the woman who had had five men in adultery and Christ promised uh, water that, would, that she would never thirst again. All of these water references is the theology of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Um, being taught by Christ to us along the way. And after he heals the man on the Sabbath, which is fitting because the Sabbath is a day of rest and of restoration. And here a man was ill. He was infirm and he was made whole. It's actually the most appropriate day for a man to be healed. But the Jews have problem with this because he's taking up his bed and he's walking. It's very hypocritical. And Christ uses this opportunity to say, hey, you, you Jews, you Pharisees, you scribes, you claim to know who God is. And you look for a testimony, but Christ says, the testimony that I have is the works I do and the testimony from the Father. In fact, John bore testimony 
to me. But he says, I don't even need that testimony. And so the Jews, they want to persecute him. And we see here the, the theology of the father and the son. And we see that the Jews right away realize in verse 18, it says, Hereupon, therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he would not only break the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, get this, making himself equal to God. The Jews realized that Christ wasn't making a claim of the heretic Arius, who said that Christ, the second person in Trinity, was below and lesser than the Father. The Jews at the time of Christ realized that Jesus of Nazareth was making himself equal to God the Father, consubstantial with the Father, as we say in the Nicene Creed on Sunday. He says that the Father has given all judgment to the Son. This is why Christ will come to judge every single human from Adam and Eve to the very last baby born. There's also a prophecy of the Antichrist in this chapter. I don't know if you caught it. Many of the church fathers quote this chapter uh, in verse 25 as a prophecy of the Antichrist. And it goes like this, Amen, amen, I say unto you that the hour cometh and now is when the dead shall hear the voice. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. And I just closed my tab. Darn it. Hang with me a little bit. Let me get, the, sorry, I closed my tab and I have to refind it. It's the verse, him you will hear. Okay, I got to open again. I apologize for that. But it opened it a little bit different. Oh, it opened it to five. Chapter five, or to four. Here's chapter five. All right, the prophecy of the Antichrist. See, I got you all excited because I started talking about the Antichrist. Everybody always wants to know about the Antichrist. And then I lost, I closed my tab by accident. Okay, here it is. Um, where'd it go? It won't let me search the page, unfortunately. Well, anyway, I can't find the verse right now. I've lost my tab and I'm back open and it's different. But he says, oh, here it is, uh, verse 43. There it is, verse 43. I am come in the name of the Father and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Many of the church fathers cite this verse, chapter 5, verse 43, saying um, that the Antichrist will arise from the Jews and will initially deceive the Jews because he will come in his own name. And so Christ said that's going to happen one day. And he says, do not think that I'm going to accuse you to the Father. You are condemned and accused by Moses because he says, Moses wrote of me. And he's talking about in the Pentateuch how Moses said, one day a prophet will arise greater than him to initiate a new covenant, not the old covenant. And Moses says, listen to him. And so Christ is appealing back to that teaching, which they know from Moses, that a great prophet will arise. And he's saying, I am not only that prophet, I am the son of God. And I am the judge. So that's chapter five. And as you know, uh, tomorrow we'll go to John chapter six, and that has the bread of life discourse. So we can see here that Christ's message is starting to turn, and it's going to bring about a message of condemnation, of hypocrisy against the Jewish leaders of his time. And we're going to see when he starts telling them, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. They completely abandon him. They want nothing of that. And that's when we start to see the apostles getting strengthened and uh, him getting ready to commission them um, and, and establish them as he begins his ministry towards Jerusalem, which leads to the passion. So that's John chapter 5. Uh, thanks for watching. Please uh, share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Parlor, and subscribe to get all the videos every day and uh, remember play that rosary every day 
And remember our Lord Jesus Christ said, you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and happy Advent.